thank you so much for coming to this video and my name is Rosie and me and my husband got married in Mexico this past July and it was the best thing we could have ever done for ourselves um, my golden retriever is just gonna be chilling licking himself throughout this video so welcome I get questions so often about our wedding and how we even were able to pull this off. A lot of people don't have a ton of like knowledge on destination weddings and honestly think that they are probably much harder than they actually are in reality. So I wanted to make a video kind of going into detail about everything and give everyone as much guidance and information as I can and with the knowledge that I have. I'm also a wedding photographer and so I have witnessed a lot of weddings. I have also attended and photographed destination weddings. So I do consider myself to be someone that has a lot of knowledge on this subject. And yeah, let's just get into it. Anyone else's dogs do that? It's one of his more bizarre qualities that he has, but it's very sweet too. Also, if you end up having questions at the end of the video, just comment them and I'm always happy to help. The first question I get often is, how did you begin the planning process? I think that that's the most daunting part to a lot of people is like, how do we even get started? What we did is we actually reached out to this company. It's called destinationweddings.com. Or it sounds like a little weird because you're like, what is this site? Um, they're just going to help us plan our wedding. But I had a mutual friend that I knew had used Destination Weddings. And um, so we went through there and pretty much you just felt like a contact form of like what you are looking for in a destination wedding, kind of where you're wanting to do it. Kind of what your price range is if you're wanting like an all-inclusive adults only all of those things you get to give all those details they set you up with an expert that's works through their company and they help you plan your wedding and get you in contact with the different resorts or venues that you are curious about and it's a free service which was very very cool we use cindy um her name is cindy garen if you do go to destinationweddings.com i would recommend working with her the next question i get is where did we stay do we recommend an all-inclusive or um, a resort that is not all-inclusive? We stayed at the Pueblo Benito Pacifica in Cabo San Lucas, and one, it was absolutely stunning. They also have four Pueblo Benitos in Cabo, the Rose, the Blanco, I wanna say. If I got that wrong, I'm gonna put him here. Oh, the Sunset Beach, and then the Pacifica. So the Pacifica is an adults-only all-inclusive. It is so luxurious. Like, going there, it's like, like truly like a, like an oasis it feels like heaven it's so beautiful the amenities are incredible as well as the staff was great and it's pretty secluded which was nice um and the resort is not massive so even with like we were operating during covid protocol obviously it never felt like an overcrowded resort also with it being adult only it did feel a little bit like more elevated upscale versus having a bunch of children there um i love kids i do i have a niece and a nephew i've been around kids my whole life but um, it was nice to choose an adult only what i recommend an all-inclusive versus your other options totally kind of depends on what you want I think that the all-inclusive works really great because when you're there everything is already paid for so your guests also have already committed financially to whatever price that was like part of your group rate but then everyone's pretty much paid by the time that you get there so it kind of feels very stress-free like you're just there and you can like order what you want um, get the drinks that you want it's just really nice and then you can always upgrade for different amenities like the spa I mean I've also noted that a lot of people will like rent a nice Airbnb like a villa for their family and friends for weddings and then be able to like go to like a Costco and like bring in all your food and beverage and do it that way it completely just depends on what you want the all-inclusive option ju option just made the most sense for us and it ended up working out really well another question we get often is were people mad that they weren't invited maybe I don't know like no one really expressed it to us we obviously with doing a destination wedding couldn't have this like 100 to 200 person wedding like a lot of people do when they do it locally it just wasn't an option for us we really had to limit ourselves we were only invited 60 people the assumption that about half of the people would be able to go and half wouldn't which our final number including us was 33 people 33 guests which included parents siblings friends and it was really great that way if people were mad that they weren't invited they didn't express it to us no matter what with a wedding like at the end of the day you can't please everyone you just have to do what feels right for you and that this is what felt right to us so 
a lot of family members were not invited or not able to go due to either financials or because we couldn't afford to invite so much extended family and we still felt a lot of like support and excitement for us even though like we couldn't have everyone that we loved and cared about there the other question is how many people did we invite versus how many could come which i kind of answered that we invited just over i think 60 like 65 ish and 33 including me and my husband ryan were able to go did you pay for people's travel um, we did not. I would have loved the luxury of being able to um, afford to pay for even our parents or our wedding parties travel, but we did not, which also became the conversation piece of like, what if people can't come because they can't afford it? And like, that is something with destination weddings. You just kind of have to accept and be totally okay with going into because not everyone is going to be able to make it. Um, at the end of the day, your wedding is your most important day of your life this far. It was the most important day to me and my husband, but at the end of the day, I'm not trying to sound like a Debbie Downer, it is not the most important day of everyone else's life. They're so happy to celebrate you if they can, but people have lives and sometimes they can't afford to use their vacation days or save up their money and sacrifice other things maybe with their family. Sometimes it just doesn't work out. If people can't come to the wedding, you just have to be very much at peace with that. And it also just made us even more grateful for the people that could come because it just felt very special and like we appreciated everyone that could try and if they couldn't come we were okay with that and then the people that were there we were like let's just soak this in and enjoy for the people that could come but the nice thing that we were able to do with destinationweddings.com and our resort was we were able to reserve a group rate so that was really incredible because everyone booked through destinationweddings.com through our like specific link that was also hooked up to our resort and they were able to get like a deal on the rooms so we were able to stay at like a luxury resort for a pretty affordable price for an all-inclusive and there was a payment plan attached to it so like for us like we paid like a couple hundred bucks a month over the course of a year to get ourselves to be fully paid um, by the time we went on our vacation talk to your hotels and see if they offer something like that I mean you're bringing a good group group size to their establishment to spend money so normally they will try to set something up like that and they're pretty simple to set up did on the wedding day did we have professional hair and makeup done through the resort they obviously had like your wedding package so we had like a wedding package deal so honestly look around the holidays and try to book based off of that we booked like a valentine's day special and we're able to get one of their premium packages for a much more affordable price and hair and makeup was included I personally didn't love the portfolio that was provided of the hair and makeup and I felt more comfortable doing my own hair and makeup for the trip and I offered it to all my bridesmaids and family members if they wanted hair and makeup provided and they kind of were all in the same place of being like honestly let's just do it ourselves so we ended up kind of balling out on some makeup we talked to a local um, hair and makeup artist um, TSG artistry we talked to Abby and Morgan and they recommended a bunch of different makeup products that they would recommend for humidity and that type of weather and just like the heat so we were able to like get some really awesome makeup products and I think it all came together really well and one of our great friends Maddie she's really great at hair so she helped all of us get ready on the day of the wedding which was so nice because I feel like all of us were most nervous about doing our hair and she alleviated all the stress and was able to like get us ourselves like all done up with our hair do what works for you the makeup it was really expensive through the resort and none of us were like loving the example images that we received of the portfolio so we we're like let's just do it ourselves how long did we stay versus our guests so we ended up staying um we'll actually go watch our cabo vlog and vlogmas because uh we actually had a lot we had some travel issues so we actually missed a day at the resort so fun but we ended up we were originally going from a tuesday to the following wednesday so eight nights eight nights at the resort um so we ended up getting seven nights at the resort which was okay it was a bummer because it wasn't what we wanted we wanted an extra day but most of our guests ended up staying around four or five days in mexico which i think was the perfect time for them we all did stay at the same resort I, we had no children at our wedding so we were all adults so we were all could stay there it was actually really great because it really made us all like really connected for the days that we were there we got to spend so much time together and I would recommend all staying at the same place when you do a destination wedding. Any challenges with payments or currency exchanges? Um, I'm guessing this is like pertaining to payments like as like the wedding packages and stuff like that and we did not. Um, we actually just like what we had to do every time we made a payment was like actually physically print the invoice, sign it, and then also like write out our card information and then send our card 
front and back and our license or our passport to make sure it matched and we never had any issues it was honestly like very simple the other thing that i get asked a lot is like how did we bring in like outside vendors or anything like that how did we pick a lot of that stuff so we did bring in our photographer we brought in kylie morgan and she stayed with us um at the resort with her husband and photographed our wedding day which was great to have someone that we trusted honestly like i know that a lot of resorts do provide a photographer for your packages like a couple hours of coverage but i really 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 highly recommend bringing your own if you can afford it um because we the way we kind of got around like the vendor fee was that we paid for kylie to stay at the resort for three days kylie didn't want to stay at the resort and she wanted to stay elsewhere we would have had to pay a vendor fee to bring her in but since she was part partially a guest it all worked out that way i just really like valued having someone that we like knew going into it versus someone we would meet out on vacation but then as for all the other things like florals and chairs and all that stuff it was all actually provided so like there was like a base amount of things that we already had included in our package like the standard chairs a bouquet for me um a boutonniere for ryan um some of those things and then we got a sheet like a very very long excel doc of things that we could add on so like we upgraded our chairs we upgraded our backdrop um or like our altar that we stood under to like a big triangle with florals attached we upgraded the tables we upgraded um, to all the girls being able to have their own bouquets. We upgraded to boutonnieres for all the guys. Um, I think. Did we not do boutonnieres? I can't even remember. So we upgraded those things and we upgraded um, like food and that's it. But so then obviously that makes the price different because you're paying for more upgraded items. But so you can definitely do it a lot cheaper. But that was just our preference. We told the wedding planner at the resort what we wanted. I sent her a Pinterest board and I said, these are the different things we want. These are the florals we want. These are like the types of um, table decor we want. And we just let them run with it. And I showed up on our wedding day and I had no idea what it was going to look like. And it was stunning. I guess I would say also with destination weddings, I'm sure you could be more hands-on than I was. I was very much in the mindset of like, these are professionals. They are providing me a service. They do this all the time. I need to trust them. They probably have a better eye about this stuff than I do. So I just let them get creative and have fun with it. And I honestly liked it because it took a lot of stress off of me. For how expensive it can be, um, someone was like, I don't want to spend a ton of money. I think if you're going to have a wedding in general, you're going to spend a good chunk of money. If you want to elope, you can obviously cut a lot more costs doing it that way. But if you want to have like a wedding with even 30 people, you're going to be paying a good chunk of money because obviously you're going to be doing food and drink and obviously your attire and florals and all that stuff. I'll be totally transparent with our costs of how much we spent on our wedding. It was around $30,000. Ryan and I were engaged for almost two years, so we were able to save up. We also were um, really blessed to have some help from our parents as well as, again, just saving up for a long time doing payment um, plans with different um, vendors. We obviously could have made it a lot cheaper if we didn't bring in a photographer. We obviously could have made it a lot cheaper if we would have done all of like the baseline things that were provided. We just chose to upgrade. If we did not choose to upgrade, we probably could have done the wedding with all of our guests included, um, like for the price of the wedding day for probably under like 15 if we didn't upgrade anything. But again, that was our choice and I feel very satisfied with it. It was beautiful. I also had this vision in my brain that I wanted it to look really stunning if people were going to come so far to enjoy this day i wanted it to like look really beautiful and i feel like we accomplished that realistically doing a wedding here with the, like 150 people 200 people we probably would have spent more than that so honestly i felt very satisfied in that way because you're going to spend money no matter what and personally i was satisfied with how we spent our money I looked around on our wedding day and I was like, this feels worth it to me. All around a destination wedding felt like us and that's why we did it and it was a hard choice to make in the moment, but once we made it, we felt really, really satisfied and I, I, it was like the best decision we could have made for our wedding. How to inform your guests of your lodging and how do you book a room block? So again, I kind of said that, but through destination weddings, they set it all up for us, which was great. So they got us like a customized link that we put on our save the dates. So on the back of it, we have like a detailed list of like, Okay, you're gonna go to this website, you're gonna type in like Nary Piper 21 or whatever the code was, and then it would pull up all of our information of our room block, and then they could specifically go in there and reserve their own room. The nice thing about it too is that like we reserved, I can't remember how many rooms that we reserved, like let's say 20 rooms, and they all differentiated 
over like kind of how big the rooms were. Some of them were just like the standard room, no ocean view or anything like that. Then you had like a standard room with an ocean view and then you had like a, a suite and like a suite with an ocean view. So you had all these different ones. People could choose whichever one they wanted. So if people wanted to try to do the trip for as like a minimal cost as possible, they could choose the cheapest room option. If some people were wanting to like kind of ball out a little bit, make it a bigger vacation for themselves, they could choose a different option. And it was all set up through there and then as they booked the room through Destination Weddings through our link, they were able to set up a payment plan with their card hooked up and it just was so simple. And the next question was, how do you book a caterer or a baker if you're not able to try things? Ideally, it would have been great if Ryan and I could go down to the resort a year before and try out some of the food and get our like bearings and like be able to check out the space that we we're getting married in prior to the wedding. We didn't have that luxury, which is totally fine and very, very normal. So we didn't get to try the food and we didn't get to try the cake or anything like that. But we just talked with our wedding planner at the resort. We were like, we are thinking these different dishes. We did like a fish option, a, a steak option, and then a vegetarian option, and then sides that went with all of that. And we just like chose the ones that sounded the best to us. And then we asked our planner being like, hey, would you recommend these ones? Can you help guide us in the right direction? And that was how we did the pickings for that. The food was incredible. The whole entire time we were there, the Pueblo Benito resorts are so good. For all inclusives, I know it can be hit or miss with food. We literally had like the best food. So I would really recommend that resort, especially if you're doing an all-inclusive, you want the food to be good. And the last question that I got, and we actually get often are like, do we have any regrets or do we wish that we would have done it differently? And at the end of the day, no, honestly, like I feel so satisfied with our wedding. Like I really were like, I really am sad. Like um, two of my sisters couldn't be there with their families and like that, was such a sad thing for me because I, I love my family. I guess like I wish that some people could have made it that couldn't. But again, you have to be so okay with like it just not working out like that. But I don't really regret anything. I mean, um, I w uh, you know what? I do regret one thing. I wish we would have stayed a couple days longer because there was so much excitement around our wedding day that I wish that Ryan and I would have had just a few days really alone because it kind of never worked out with like the overlap of like people coming and leaving. We didn't really have like a full day alone and I wish we would have had that because it would have been nice just to like kind of decompress together. All in all, I don't regret anything. I think it was like one of the most memorable, fun experiences. Vacationing was so fun. Like I don't get a vacation with my parents anymore. I don't get a vacation with my friends really. So to have everyone that like we cared about like looking out upon everyone and like realizing they all came to celebrate us was like literally like one of the coolest experiences. I really can't say enough good things. We also just like had really great people in our corner helping us. Um, Cindy with Destination Weddings, Gabriella with um, Pueblo Benito Pacifica, her planning skills were so incredible. She really took care of us. Um, the whole staff at Pueblo Benito was so kind. But yeah, if you have any more questions, I know that more people will have questions just because it kind of happens as you start to discuss it and things come up. I would love to continue to answer some. It was a really, really cool experience and I would love to encourage like other people to go do it and realize like it is doable and it's really not as hard as you might have it built up in your head it to be. So yeah, just comment your questions down below. If I get enough, I can do another um, little Q&A. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was helpful. If you do a destination wedding, tell me about it. I wanna hear about it. If you did one, tell me stuff that you regret or wish you would have done differently. Um, and if you are doing one, literally tell me your Instagram. I wanna go stalk you and your photos because I will live vicariously through you and your wedding. Um, yeah, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like and subscribe. And we'll see y'all next time. Bye.